I'm going to call to order the select board meeting of Monday, February 5th. Uh, we are expecting the New Hampshire Department of Transportation. Uh, some reps from uh, that department did be here tonight to talk about the safety issues on Portland Avenue. It's not a public hearing. Uh, we may uh, allow comments from the general public. We'll kind of see, but we want everybody to try to remember that this remains our business meeting. So, um, so. Okay, uh, minutes of January 29th. I, uh, rather than I just changed the word admonished to encourage, that was my suggested change, mm -hmm. because, and I will explain that, why. I mean, Tom, uh, when <clears throat> the auditor was speaking to me about, you know, it's a good idea to send out a reminder about it, it wasn't that he was, he suspected anything. The admonished just leads, there's kind of this to it. He was just encouraging us, you know, it's a good thing, send out a reminder every year to your employees that, act ethically and if they see anything funny or you know suspicious to come, come uh, talk to someone so that was my only change anything else all right by consensus we're good with the minutes yep okay. any community input this evening start out with okay uh department head business so i see a road agent and a chief of police you were here george uh, can we start with highway? Really matter. Okay. <coughs> from Townsend Energy to repair of the at the transfer station. Apparently, it was forced off by. Apparently, it wouldn't stop. But he said it was. You mentioned that. Is that what you mentioned last week? Two hundred and eighty-seven plus. And they're not considering it warranty doesn't so they tried. Yeah. They think they tried so. All right, I'll move first to number one one zero five at Townsend Energy to repair the heat transfer for two hundred and eighty-seven dollars and forty-five cents. Second. Any questions? So they wouldn't they wouldn't consider it under warranty, is that what you said, Bill? That's correct. Okay. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 I have a second PO for the transfer station for the repair of the electrical system to the new trash pump. I was damaged by the sidewalk. Well, by the it's also what you talked to us about, right? Mm -hmm. That's correct. That's for six hundred and ninety-four dollars. Well, we okay. alternate. It's Jody goes that one. I get it. Sorry. That's okay. No, no, no. It's, it, it's, a, so yeah. it's, it's our little game. It's <laughs> to so keep everybody on their toes so that you know we don't start falling asleep. Feel involved. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> don't start nodding off. <laughs> Moving to accept purchase order 1106 to G and B Electric. The G and B Electric. Okay. To repair electrical system to new trash compactor for six hundred and ninety-four dollars. Excuse me a second. Any discussion? So that now it's um we were putting some barriers around it. So that's not included, that's just a repair of the no, that's damage. Right? That we <coughs> there won't be no cost for that. Okay. What are your papers to go to this? Do you want me to huh? paper clip? And I have one more. All right, wait, wait, look, look. now that that's all set, we're, I haven't called the question yet, so. This is uh, uh, to see whether or not we want to authorize the GMB electric purchase order. All those in favor say aye. 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 You mean for a 1099 later on? 1099, whatever. Yeah, so I guess so. For the company? Well, if it's an independent contractor, if it's a single contractor, I don't know. He's no, got a 1099. Yeah. So we'll just I'll keep it together. Yeah, keep it together. All right. And sorry, you have another one? Yeah, I just got this one from the police chief, actually, for the alarm system. <laughs> this is for monitoring the alarm system from Pro Technologies. Okay, so let's just move and we'll talk about it. I'll move purchase order number 1363 for okay, alarm monitoring highway annual fee for $239.40. Second. 
Okay, any discussion? Actually, I did have a question, but it was answered when you said annual fee. <laughs> so, yeah. this is what we do. I just don't remember it coming before, but I'm obviously at an annual fee with care. Every year. So, is this something that you can arrange that? The company? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't Pro, say yeah, Pro yes. Technologies. We're on the contact person for the alarm company. And I've got one here for the town hall as well. So, yeah. okay. so okay. who, what, which building? Are all of our buildings alarmed? Just this building and the highway department. What about the fire? No, fire department's not. Right. I'm sorry, did I, did we, where are we in this, this state of affairs? Did we move it? Move it, second. second it? All right, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 It's been difficult, and the ice has been difficult this year. Yeah, and when I went to work, when I left later for work here, all the roads, and then the sidewalks have been, have been treated, so it's unfortunate. It's first so I, do you want to talk about what we might do now with George, or wait and, and do it when we're in the town business part of it, as far as the, the, the complaint and the... Well, we have immunity, don't we? Or there's well, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I have two questions. Do they come out of... The front of onto Front Street, or are they walking out the back door? That's a good question. I think they said they fell on the front street, so maybe the front no door. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And this was at noon time, and when? on whatever day it was. Well, it wasn't today because no, it wasn't yeah. today. But the email said it was at noonish or something to that effect. Yeah. So I mean, <coughs> when when it was when it was rained that morning. There had to be runoff or something that drove them. Wait, Wait, but what, it was treated in the morning. We not in that morning. Oh, that's right, it was a dry day. So, yeah. <laughs> it was a warm day. Yeah. It was a day oh, yeah. we didn't have any precipitation. I didn't get no yeah. phone calls or anything. Yeah. So, this, the moisture that froze was coming from... Okay, well, the, it came off the awning and stuff. The, the ice, there was some ice right under the awning when I went the other day, and I chopped it off and moved it out of there, but... Said he called because yesterday around noon his wife uh, fell on the ice and was taken to the hospital. So, but and I, I was not aware of any precept yeah. yesterday. I yeah, or Saturday. That's just normal. Honestly, so honestly, walk would leave my walk front door of my house and walk down to Front Street and walk the dogs up Front Street and back up south and back to our house and. Didn't notice anything out of the ordinary, any ice or anything. So, yeah. so you know, we could just ha have a friendly little a letter sent saying that um, we don't believe the town is responsible. We, uh, the day in question was dry and there is moisture that comes off the awning of the building. Mm -hmm. we, could, we could just do that, keep it low key. I mean, our other choice is to send it to Steve. Yeah. I mean, I, I think we could try just a low-key response. Yeah. And see what the next... There's no fault on our part. It's right. Just you could reference the um, our policy. snow removal policy, yeah. And the sidewalk has quick, less so. snow now than ever. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the front I mean, it's hard to keep up with these conditions. Yeah, I mean, you know, things are just... You're, you have to be careful when you're walking. Right? And you, there's black ice. There's I mean, it's challenging going up... Um, Main Street, right yeah, at the very right. beginning. We went, we went and treated all that today by hand. And yeah, and it seems like a, a, a no-win battle, but everything just sort of ends up at that last so quarter of. If you haven't fall. read our snow, it's new. We, we, yeah, have her set. It should be linked to online. I hope it's online. And it is. 
Yeah, you, if you could read that, that could be a helpful thing. And, you know, maybe you can suggest, I'm not saying it has to change, but I mean, I mentioned to you last week that we need to start looking for a sidewalk, a piece of equipment that we can yeah. do the sidewalks at the same time. Treat them. If we're going to plow them, we should be treating them. Mm -hmm. So, so how are you doing it now, George? Are you doing everything by hand, or do you, or do you drive the truck? We up can on drive the, the truck the wrong side of the road on some of them, but well, not all of the way side. We can get to it. That's it. The rest is by hand. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we looked into a, a sander that we could put on the back of the skid steer, and it's about five thousand dollars. It's just, you know, it's not. However, that could be transferred to a different machine later on if we had to. So that could be a good answer for the operating budget next year. Sometimes that happens. You know, if there's you know, been a real I mean, decrease least, in the salt budget, I although. Think the talk should be okay. Think yeah. about it. Because yeah. my plan is to inventory all the sidewalks and get to them and try to take care of them. But I you know we can't do a lot with that machine we have. So. Right. You know, I'm really happy to hear you say what you just said. Inventories. The sidewalks. Yes, because you see the damn stuff. Yeah. Well, not only that, but but just in general, we don't have a lot of hard data, and it would be nice to build up some hard data. As a matter of fact, I think I sent you an email when I came across a conversation we'd had with Jeff last year in catch basins. Somewhere we've got a numbering system because he said catch basins twenty one and twenty two. Did you have you come across? I that? no no data on it. I, uh, I did have the list that when they cleaned some catch basins, there's three of them that no. Damage, I mean, that same issue. So I'm yeah. thinking it might be them. So, well, so I have somewhere in that office, then, I think, is something we received from. Um, <clears throat> he's not an engineer, but he, uh, he had worked for the water district here. And we hired him to do sampling of our outfalls, you know, with regard to MS4 and stormwater management. And he, maybe he, that he developed a catch basin. At, let, me, let me check to see if I can find. If I, have something available that where I, that I can find online. It would be on our Google Drive, so you'd be able to have access. But if you're not sure sometimes where to look, I'll check. <laughs> sometimes when you know where to look, it's kind of hard to find things for some of us. But Google search is a wonderful thing. Yeah. We have like up to disagree sometimes. Yeah, it is if you if you, if you know what you're looking for. If you're not completely right. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, I'll I'll take a peek and see if I can find it. But, but to get back to, you know, one of the important measures in the stormwater permit that we're going to have to gear up for is standard operating procedures, you know, and of which we have, I think, pretty much close to zero. So, you know, I'm not asking you to make up for the sins of the last, you know, 30 no, years, no, no, but, you I know, mean, it would be, it would be a nice... It would be helpful for all of us. Yeah, so... So I no, just, I mean, like, looking at the sidewalk and seeing, <clears throat> like, there's some raised hot top and stuff where I catch every time I go down Main Street, and that, you know, like, probably can dig that up and pass that, fix that better next, you know, for summer, but there's, uh, you know, I need to see what the, side, what the sidewalks look like, so. So, yeah. if and when you do Just things check. like that, <clears throat> just please remember it would be helpful for us to store them on the drive. So there is a folder in the drive for the highway department with subfolders and everything that you can organize as you see fit, but you know, it's that would be great, and then anybody can see it who might do a search. It would be helpful too, especially with the sidewalks when we start looking at the village, repaving of the village. Absolutely, any 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 inventory data, data compilations, exactly. Yeah. I mean, a lot of them, I mean, exactly. like a lot of old towns, you know, there'd be a tree or a uh, right. telephone pole in the middle of the sidewalk. It wouldn't, wouldn't be doing time. that anymore, but I mean, at one time it was okay, so I mean, I'll take that into account. And Bill, if they planted mailboxes in the middle of a brand new sidewalk when they built the road, yeah. right in the middle of the sidewalk. So we do have an inventory of our roads, so, and, and if you haven't seen it or want to see it, it will be available, I mean, it is available online, so just let me know. Okay. We'll, we'll be working, that's what we'll be working with the 10 year road. Yeah. One draw of the all right, I think we're, I think we're good unless there's something else.
Yes. We're going to deal with our chief of police, and then I think we can, um, we can talk with you. So welcome. You found us yeah. again. Yeah. Very good. Thank God it's tonight and not whenever it was two weeks ago. Right. Really bad driving that night. Yes, I heard. Yeah. 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 Okay, the first item I have is first order number 1358 City Door. Uh, tire sensor repair to cruiser 74 and a bumper repair to cruiser number 72 for a grand total of approximately $350. Okay, Mr. Chair, I'll make that first order 1358 City of Dover for cruiser repair on 74 and 72 for a total of $350. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 We are getting ready to present the DARE program at the grade school this mm -hmm. year. I'm going to share with you kind enough to allow us to have uh, Deputy Kirkinson come and present the program again. So he's asked to purchase some items for him. Uh, DARE banners, pens, pencils, balloons, DARE lions, pencil packets, uh, graduate certificates and holders, essay winner medals, gift certificate, uh, DARE certificates, and gold sticker packets for a total of $468.05. And that will come out of the DARE plan. New purchase order number 1359 for, to DareCatalog.com for assorted DARE materials for a grand total of $468.05. Second. Any discussion? I'll just say a, a big thank you to our former sergeant for continuing to come and, and do this for us. It's a really wonderful thing. All those in favor say aye. 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 have two dance and entertainment uh, licenses that need the, uh, the board's approval and uh, signature. Uh, first one is number 18001, that's the American Legion Post, and 18002 to Dover Bowl. Is there anything with these? Yeah, the entertainment time. license from Dover Bowl last week, didn't it? Mm -hmm. We did have one. We signed from the vote. state for the liquor. Possibly. It must have been for the liquor license. Oh, it was yeah. possibly that. <clears throat> so, it referenced dancing. Yeah, so yeah. Do we need a motion for this? Do I just sign it? What, what is your... Uh, like, I don't know that we issue okay. dance and... That one's big enough, I can see. Dance and entertainment licenses to the American Legion and to uh, Dover Bowl. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 I will now sign it. Font, so 18-001 is the Legion. Mm -hmm. And 002 is Dover Bowl. Okay. <clears throat> and while we're, well, Dover Bowl has come up, I did notify Mark Bowen that we're talking about the other keynote public hearing <clears throat> next week. And he, I think he will be here. Town Hall and Police Department, purchase order number 1360, Pro Technologies, for $239.40. We accept purchase order 1360 to Pro Technologies for one alarm monitoring for Town Hall for the annual fee of $239.40. So, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Second proposal that we received for removing different. asbestos on uh, Sewell Street. And yes, what yeah, we did. Uh, uh, I met with uh, the folks from Paul Brothers on Thursday, and he said he would get an estimate or uh, proposal to us uh, prior to tonight. And uh, I checked email before coming up here, and they have not submitted one as of yet. So. Well, I mean, clearly the second, I mean, I figured even if it, even if you get, we get a proposal that's half the other one, it's like, yeah, it's still a lot of money. But mm -hmm. this is, this is different. Much more reasonable. 
Of course, they gave us the, I don't know if you read the email, but the, the police discount. <laughs> I must have missed that. Where, where he was a former police Oh, employee. I missed that. So his company oh, I gave, us no, that, I missed that. gave us the, you know, the, the police discount. So, so, so where are we in the, I mean, is Mick still on, on board for doing the demolition according to the contract? There it is. And the cost, all right. And um, is there any way that, um, I'm just, I mean, still, I mean, $1,800. It was 18, 18, 72. Yeah, so that's clearly a lot different from 11,000. But if if we can find half of that elsewhere in the budget, can you find half of that? In, like, I could, I could essentially absorb the entire the entire 1800. I will argue um, against that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to retract my prior statement. <laughs> uh, and, and actually, it might even come out of my line item uh, with mm -hmm. details that I work. So, yeah. you know, you know, last year there was several thousand dollars uh, left yeah. in that line, and so we could easily absorb the. Because it does say it's only an estimate; it could go up a little bit depending on how bad it is. So, yeah. so even if we spent, uh, you know, it ended up being two thousand or twenty-five hundred or something like that, it's still uh, it's still worth okay. it as far as uh, as far as I'm concerned. Well, do you have a purchase order or a contract? I have a purchase order, and I have the proposal. So I'm thinking maybe it's initial on the proposal and the signature on the purchase order might work. All right. Well, let's get it on the on the floor so we can talk about it. Okay. <clears throat> So I purchased number 1364 to BNR Environmental Services, LLC in Portsmouth, um, for the removal of the asbestos work at the highway, highway building. And it only said an estimate of 1872, so I don't know if you want to put 1872 or put 2,000, which is like a batch Yeah. I'm going to purchase order number 1364 to BNR Environmental Services for assessment and abatement at the old highway shed for up to $2,000. Thank you. Okay. So, <clears throat> sorry, so how, how does the board feel about, uh, you know, Chief Duchamp's proposal about covering the expense of this? Is that like this palatable? Yeah. And, uh, I appreciate it. I have a sneaking suspicion you might be hearing that. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? No, I mean, I, my think? only. I, I I'm not I'm, concerned at all with, 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 with this company who's doing the work. I just wonder is it prudent just to wait another day or two to see if Paul Brothers comes back? They come back with a better price. But. What are, uh, let me ask you this. What are the probabilities of that? Well, Slim to none, but. <laughs> so, <laughs> we, but it's still. It's still uh, for items the size of the have for so. okay. Right, but I think those are for items 3,000 and over. Uh, for a couple with uh, the projects. I mean, it's a large project altogether, so. I mean, I'm fine with the Well, I, I'm just going to say, again, I mean, so the first one was 11,000. Mm -hmm. This one is, you know, 1,800. Mm -hmm. And we've got a police discount. Uh, all so, the brothers call us the chief tomorrow and so we can do it for 1,000. The chief will say, okay, thank you. And he won't send that to BNR, I'm sure. Well, we'll they're, they're, week, all right, right so. uh, uh, then that's fine. Okay. If you want to wait, that's yeah. fine. But we, you know, we have to put it off. Yeah. Right. Okay, so we'll see if you get Hall Brothers, and then we'll... So if they don't respond done. by tomorrow morning, then tough for them. Yeah, so. Well, they were told to have it for here, for some o'clock tonight, so. Mm -hmm. Contractors are... Yeah, I know. Sometimes work on their own schedule, yeah. as we all know. <laughs> so, 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 Mike, I mean, unless Jody also was... I mean, you wanted to... No, I, I'm ready to move on it. I'm fine with them. I'm saying, but if they do call in the morning, they come with a better price, I think. They were asked to deliver it by 7 o'clock tonight. Mm -hmm. I understand that. So, if, if I'm going to ask you, if you're ready to vote on it, we'll call it. We'll call it. Ready to for it. I think the chief of police is astute enough to understand that if a, a much lower bid comes in in the morning, that you would probably call us and we could come back and do a special meeting if we had to. By the end of the week, couldn't we? Yeah. All right. I'll call the question. And so this is the contract. That's the, that's, no, that's actually just a proposal. Just a proposal. All right. He's so looking for right. fifty percent of that. So okay. So all just initial.
That's all that I have to do. Anything for me? Are you able to stay for oh, yes, the I'll conversation? Perfect. Excellent. Thanks. Sure. Thank you. Hello, Senator Waters. Good evening. All right. Um, I think we. Good evening. Good evening. It isn't quite 7 o'clock, but it's very close to 7 o'clock, so I'm going to invite uh, Bill Lambert and Mike Dugas. Mike Dugas, both from the New Hampshire Department of Transportation. Yes, yes. Okay, to come up. And I mean, if we can arrange ourselves just so that, because uh, I think some people are here to, to listen to this, so maybe arrange the chairs anyway. Yeah, that Uh, I'll, I'll attempt to set the stage as best I can. Thank you very much for that. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So about, well, I don't know, was it four years ago? Yes. Do you, have, you probably have the date. I, I know I did when I first wrote to you. I just did. Okay. Just 2013 is when you initially wrote to me. Yes. And... We met a couple of times, as I recall, mm -hmm. and you did a study of uh, speed on Portland Avenue, and in the final analysis, it was reduced from 55 to 50. Correct. And um, we were also looking to do something else to sort of calm the traffic on Portland Avenue, based on some of the recommendations that we made. The difficulty that we have as the small town of Rollinsburg is that we have very little leverage. Mm -hmm. and. So we participated with the Stafford Regional Planning Commission and the, the state's MP, I don't, you know, I, I don't, I think the, the, I'm going to forget all the letters, but, you know, the 10-year road plan that the state has. And, you know, they were, when, when we were working with Stafford Regional to compile, you know, the, the latest additions to that plan, I mean, there, there were these many projects. And they were coming in from Dover and Somersworth and Rochester and combined, you know, towns or municipalities that have planning departments. You know, they've got studies and data and, you know, and we have a, you know, part-time planning consultant mm -hmm. that we pay $1,600 a year to. So we feel we're at a disadvantage trying to go that route. And so, yeah. and since that time, <clears throat> we've had another accident on Portland Avenue to, um, you know, a resident of town. And so this strikes, you know, we're unhappy if anybody gets hurt on any street anywhere, but on our own street when we've known in the past some of the difficulties. So we're here to try to open up the conversation again. And if there's anything, if I've missed something, if there's something you want to say about what the process we followed, please do. And get, before we start, let me just say thank you, Senator Waters, for being here. And so if there's something at any point that you think you might like to say, just let us know, and I'm sure we'll be happy to hear from you. <coughs> Well, for, point of, for the purpose of introduction, um, I'll, I'll introduce ourselves and our roles in the department. I'll let Mike explain his role. Um, I'm Bill Lambert, so I'm the state traffic engineer. And the state traffic engineer in our traffic bureau is within the department's uh, division of operations. So we're kind of in the maintenance of organization. So in traffic, we're responsible for signs, pavement markings, and traffic signals. Um, the design, implementation, and maintenance of all of those features. Um, from a regulatory side, we also have the uh, uh, commissioner's authority to regulate highways as far as speed limit, stop signs, uh, parking regulations, and things of that sort. Um, but we're not the design uh, design group. So our highway safety group that Mike is in charge of is out of our project development division, highway design office. So I'll let Mike describe what, what that role is. And, is we can open up the discussion of things that could happen on this road. Sure. Yeah, my, um, Mike Dugas, um, the, actually the new State Highway Safety Engineer in the last couple of months. Welcome. <laughs> thank you. I've been in the DOT for almost 30 years now, but this is a new role for me to focus solely on safety. So as Bill said, I am, I am managing and leading the safety section, highway safety section. And our prime focus is to administer what's known as the Highway Safety Improvement Program. And that's a, uh, that's a portion of, this, of the federal funding that we get for highways every year. And in this case, about $10 million. And we devote that towards improving the safety of 
it's really any public roads, not even just state roads, but it's all public roads in the state, with a focus on reducing fatal and serious injury <coughs> crashes. So focusing on the most serious crashes and reducing the number of those crashes and reducing the severity of those crashes. Um, some of the things that we do, we, we, some of the work that we do is intended on improving spot locations, so fixing, for instance, an intersection, making it a safer design, or looking at uh, what's known as systemic improvements, so making small improvements over a wide area, so normal strips, uh, improved guardrails, improved signs, things like that. Mm -hmm. So things that are a small improvement but affect a lot of drivers, mm -hmm. rather than a bigger improvement in one location that affects maybe a small number of drivers. So the Highway Safety Improvement Program, that federal umbrella, that's a that's a, a program that's uh, it's a programmatic program, a project within our 10-year plan. So it's the projects that are in the Highway Safety Improvement Program are not ones that you necessarily go through regional planning and the TIP and a, and a gas adhering and all of that stuff. So yeah, it's a quick turnaround, and you don't have to compete right. regionally like, well, this is the, like with the 10-year plan. Someone came to speak to SRPC about H6. That was probably Michelle Marshall, my yes, predecessor. It is. Yes, yes. That, that is who it yeah. was. And, and that's when I came back one time and said, look, the, you know, the state may, may have some money available to, to, for us to turn Y intersections into T intersections. Mm -hmm. She had specifically mentioned that. Right. And you know, we didn't do anything with that thing, but I just wanted to verify that that's, that's the program. That right, and that's what she was talking yeah. about. So are you aware enough of uh, Portland Avenue to, to make any uh, comments or suggestions? Well, I have to admit, tonight was my first time driving on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's not unlike a lot of all the highways that we have that were built in the same era, in the 1940s to the 1960s. And we generally tried to provide a design where people could drive fast because they were going, you know, that, that was really the philosophy back then. Well, straightish highways with nice white shoulders. Yes. Makes it easy to go fast on. It, it, it does make it easy. Across I think what's yeah. happened across the years is that, you know, we we built on it. I mean, I, I live exactly. on it. Exactly. So yes. it, it's. So there are a number of driveways, there are a number of streets, uh, intersection streets, that you know people need to cross to get from one part of town to the to the next part of town, or for any, some other places where they're going to. And so, you know, to have, you know, to have 50 miles an hour, what you know, to some of us is our, you know, town street is mm. is, is is difficult. I think just to touch on because I think we had a discussion about speed limits the last time that I came. Um, so. The, as far as speed limits go, the statutes um, define speed limits in several different categories. There's, by statute uh, definition, there's uh, 30 miles an hour it would be a business district or an urban residence district, and that's a pretty, um, pretty narrow definition. So that's usually at the, the downtown Dover or something to that effect. Then you have the rural residence district, which is <coughs> somewhat um, applicable to this area. Uh, it's 35, um, but that's typically more of a uh, like a transition area coming into or out of a, a, a more urban setting. And then by definition, all other roads that aren't divided highways are 55. So that's where we start in the statute. And then when we have something different from that, uh, it has to be, by statute, it has to be based on an engineering and traffic investigation. And that's what we did the last time when we found that Typically, with the engineering and traffic investigation, you try to set speed limits at the 85th percentile. So you get a speed that captures 85% of the, of the motorists, um, that the ones that you consider to be reasonable and prudent for, for this specific highway, um, then that would be kind of an enforceable speed limit. And I, I've got the data here, but uh, I looked at it today. If I, the 85th percentile that we measured in two locations in 2013-14 time frame where it was in the mid 50s to, to high 50s, which means that, well, so I'm not trying to paraphrase or pull out the, the data. Um, so we had one that was near the Welcome to New Hampshire sign, so that's uh, the, the eastern end where the posted speed limit was 55, and we had 85th percentile. Um, I had it right in front of me when I be watching it. So the 85th percentile was 56 miles an hour. Uh, it was 54 in one direction and 58 in another. And that was with the speed limit going in that transition area uh, at 55. Um, we also, also like to have the speed limit within the 
10 mile an hour pace, that, that's a 10 mile an hour band that includes the most number of vehicles, and that was 45 to 55. So the 50 that we selected was right in the middle of that. The other area was um, within the curvy, curvy, curvilinear section, closer to the Dover line, uh, 58, 85th percentile there was 58 miles an hour, uh, which surprised us because you figured that the curve alignment would slow people down, but um, the 85th percentile was at 58, and the pace there was 50 to 60, so a little higher than it was um, to the east. So that's what we had for speed limit in, in the uh, and in the distribution, where the speed limit was posted at 55, um, in that first section that I talked about, um, there was probably 20-25% of 20% of the vehicles were higher than that, um, and the majority of those were in the first five mile an hour increment over, so from 55 to 60. Um, it tailed off after that, but you're always going to have those outliers on the, on the outside of the distribution that. That's where you have police departments to do enforcement. And they can't capture everybody because um, they're not there all the time. Um, so that's kind of where the speed limit stuff comes from. So what I've said in the past and what, what we've demonstrated through a number of uh, different attempts is that if all you're doing is changing the number on the sign, you're not changing the speed of traffic. Is your question? No, no, I'm right. with you. Okay. So if all you do is change the number on the sign, you're not changing the speed of traffic because people tend the speed of traffic is not affected by the speed limit unless you do a lot of targeted enforcement. Uh, as an example, um, since the last time we met, we had somebody that asked us to review the speed limit in Candy on Route 27, uh, the area of Charming Fair Farm, if you're familiar with it. Uh, it was posted 35 miles an hour through Candia, but the same road with the same traffic conditions in Hooksit, just on the other side of the town line, was 45. And somebody in town, um, with some support from local police had suggested that that might be a little bit low. So we did speed studies in 35 mile an hour zone and found that the 85th percentile was in the mid to high 40s, which was arguably the same that it was in the in Hookset, even though the speed limit was 10 miles an hour different. Uh, another example that I probably had when the last time we came is uh, Route 3 and 28 between Hookset and Allenstown. It's a straight mm -hmm. section, kind of like Portland Ave, um, between two communities, and uh, the, the speed limit was, there was one driveway in the middle, presumably was the reason that it was lower than 40 miles an hour, and the 85th percentile speed that we, well, wasn't even measured by us, it was a consultant that submitted the speed study um, for a client uh, that said the 85th percentile speed there was 58 miles an hour, 59 miles an hour. So just changing the, the, the signs alone doesn't change the speed of traffic, and that's why um, Mike said some projects where, um, in his previous life in preliminary design, we, we have the discussion about design speed versus target speed, and that's something that you're hearing a lot more in how, how we design now is we always design for design speed, which would be uh, the design speed that um, is a conservative number, and people generally are comfortable going quite a bit faster than the design speed. So if you build a road like Portland Ave, it's probably a design speed of, what, 50, mm -hmm. uh, but it means that cars today probably comfortably can drive it at 60 or better. Um, where now people are looking at target speed, where you're looking at um, lowering the, the um, des design characteristics so you try to facilitate slow moving traffic. So unless you change that geometry um, with the project or, or something to narrow the lanes or uh, narrow the road or put some kind of feature that, that looks like it's a, a residential area, um, very difficult to, to change the characteristic of the speed on a, on a segment. I think that's where my interest lies, not necessarily reducing the speed limit on Portland Avenue again, but the, the, the Route 4 uh, and the intersection we're talking about, Roberts Road coming into town and, and Bear Road heading towards Dover to Burr Elliott, uh, is, a, is a major cut through for both residents and non-residents. Um, to me, there needs to be some sort of common feature there. Are there traffic light? Ideally, I think. Um, but there are these people trying to go across the road, and people come, I mean, I travel the other direction to get home, so that's going to be a nuisance to me having to stop at a traffic light, but it's better than T-boning someone or being T-boned, so, which is what's happened. So whatever the state can offer, that's what I'm asking for. I think I'd like to ask uh, her if you'd like to provide some information to uh, 
to our state folks. So we have here Herb and Nancy Uetta, who are here, and uh, Herb, Herb was also, uh, I actually think, the motivating factor the last time, the first time we looked at this thing. So he's back again this time for a more deeply personal reason. And if you, if there, I think you put together some kind of matrix if you'd like to talk about it or, or anything that you might like to say for Well, first I'd like to thank uh, the state for lowering the speed limit. I think it helped, and I'd like to thank the police for enforcing it uh, more in the past five years. I think those have both helped. I mean, it's a less hazardous road maybe than it was in those respects, but in those five years, I think uh, someone made a point that cars keep getting bigger and faster and handle better, and I, I would almost bet the total volume has increased, not only up, you know, across, but certainly crossing Route 4, I would guess the volume increase and the increase in the amount of traffic um, has almost offset all those things. So I respect um, your, your, you know, the science that says just putting a sign up doesn't change behaviors. It takes enforcement as well. We don't have, I, I'm guessing the chief could sit out there all day and write tickets, but he's, he's got other stuff to do. Um, so um, I'm just looking to advance whatever, you know, we can do from a citizenry standpoint um, to, to, to keep this dialogue going to figure out if there's something we can do. And I'm open to anything. I don't have a prescriptive idea what the best solution is. But you mentioned, you know, uh, probability and severity. So, you know, a classic risk matrix says, you know, um, the severity there is clearly high, right? Someone could easily get killed. Uh, maybe you're lowering the speed limit, um, preventing my son from getting killed. I should look at it from that standpoint. It, it could very well have. Um, but I'm looking to do something in a preventative manner rather than wait till a series of horrific accidents piles up and someone gets killed. Um, you know, it just seems... You, you can do all the studies you want on paper, but, but Mike, I would challenge you at 7.30 or so, any weekday morning, Go on out there and try to cross that road in either direction. And if, or just stand there at the corner and watch for 10 or 15 minutes, and you'll see seven or eight near misses, and you'll see some of the most just crazy kind of behaviors because no one really knows what to do there. Um, I saw one this morning. So just looking to advance anything we can do, um, whether it's the towns, the onus is on the town to further push projects at the county or whether the state can advocate for something but I really implore you to study it again because uh, it just seems um, we owe it to the next family <laughs> you know um, I'd hate to have to well we said five years ago we said we'd hate to have to go you know console some family uh, didn't think it would be mine but uh, it's kind of odd that it happened that way but separate from all the emotions, my son's doing fine. He's, he's, he's uh, recovering. Um, I just think it's time to look to another level of mitigation, whether that be yeah. um, speed-related or, or traffic control-related, signage, more enforcement. I don't know. I, I feel like jumping out at that intersection and, and just like waving to everybody and saying, this is insanity, folks. Can, you know, it, it can't go on this way. Um, you know, when I leave here and I go back home, you know, I have to make, I'm, I'm on Portland Avenue, I have to make a left-hand turn. And so I'm relying on traffic behind me to be paying attention on this road that's, you know, at 50 miles an hour, and they think they've got a clear shot from wherever they are to the, to the traffic light at the end. And I have to count that they're pay, really paying attention to my brake light, you know, as I try to turn into my, my driveway. And people have said that, uh, in this first go around too. I mean, we're we're living on this street, you know, where with uh, traffic. I and, and this is just completely anecdotal, but I, I thought that uh, the reduction has helped. I, I think we've normalized a lower uh, traffic speed, but that could be just my optimistic outlook. That's so I'm thinking day, think it probably answer. does, and and so partly I'm thinking, well, if we had it if sort of normalized around 50, then why can't we do the same thing around 45? But we're we're open to other 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 ways again, whether it's traffic light at you know 
Fair and, and Roberts or, but we, you know, it has to, I think, I'm sorry, we'll just, it has to come from, uh, we need some help because we're, it's not going to go through the, 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 the planning commission's 10 year plan. I mean, we are just so down, you know, where it's on there, it's down at the bottom of the heap. So uh, I don't know if you if you looked at it or have seen it. You probably don't even see it because it's not what we send forward to the state. So right, and we when we review the early candidates for the ten-year plan, we're looking at the top of the list. Sure, or not yeah. the bottom of the list. Yeah, and I, rest assured, we're somewhere at the bottom. So, <laughs> so you know, we're looking for any you know any ideas or any ways that we can uh, you know it's a state road. So and these. Projects are expensive if we're talking about traffic lights and the like. But right. one of the things that um, that Mike and I have is because we do look at the whole state, the whole system, is that the Portland Ave is very similar, like Mike said, to a lot of other roads. In fact, on the way over here, I picked Mike up at, at the library in Epsom, which is right on Route Four, mm -hmm. and uh, pulled out to make the left to yeah. come this way. And you see the same issue. Yeah, right. right. never And that was. Yeah. Yeah. 5.30 when I picked Mike up, so that was right around mm -hmm. traffic period. But unfortunately, it's, it's a narrower segment of highways. The speeds aren't quite as high. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not quite as scary yeah. as it could be on a faster road. Yeah, but it is a yeah. scary. Right. But the traffic volumes are probably higher, so you, True. you get yeah. fewer gaps to accept. But there are a lot of roads that are very similar to this. Um, when Mike's looking at the, the Highway Safety Improvement Program, um, by law, by federal law, we have to be putting in uh, projects that demonstrate a benefit cost ratio. That there's a um, there's um, I guess equations or this data that will tell you what you can expect for reduced crashes by doing doing certain changes um, and the cost of those changes. So you have to have a benefit cost ratio that's in the plus side because the the whole purpose of that program is to reduce fatalities, serious injury crashes, and um, a lot of times when we get these places that locally are very serious, and we'll look at the crash data, um, the improvements that might mitigate them tend to be pretty expensive, so that the benefit-cost ratio doesn't apply to that program. So that's when you end up looking at the 10-year plan type of a process to get uh, something that, that's in keeping with that. Um, I, I can tell you that the community like Kensington um, is looking at a um, municipally managed project to, uh, and I think there's that option too, the municipally managed project um, through our planning bureau. Um, there's some funding in there. Um, they're looking at kind of a complete streets project, but but they're in a complete streets area where they're, they're looking at having a athletic fields and the library and the school and, and things like that that are in that section that they can connect with sidewalks and make it look like there's something different as you drive through that area. Challenge I think for Portland Ave is that your your village is here, and Portland Ave is probably built to bypass the village, mm -hmm. and, and has that kind of kind of traffic. Um, but there's a segment of us that are on one side, and, the right. and so we're we're you know kind of crossing through, and, and it's you know it's the road we live on, so mm -hmm. we're, like you know, we're turning into our driveways or trying to come out of our driveways, and there are more of there are more driveways. I mean, since we've spoken, mm -hmm. there are probably at least four or five additional driveways that have popped up on, on Portland Avenue. So what we don't hear, have here is our Highway Maintenance Bureau. Um, they do, they're the ones that permit any of the new driveways. So usually when, you know, if somebody comes in with a driveway like uh, a commercial development and they have to do a traffic study, they'll, they'll have to do something to mitigate their impact. Yeah. None, of we have drive, had, yeah. none of these driveways are, rise to the level of having to mitigate just, their impact. They're residential driveways. Residential driveways. Right. Which that can be a challenge. It will always too. be that because it's, a, it's not a commercial. Yeah, it's not area. zoned. Right. I, I often say if there was a magic pill um, sign or otherwise to, to change driver behavior, I'd be, I'd be making a lot more money because I, we can find a way to do that. But there's, um, there isn't any magic magic pill as far as a sign to, uh, to slow people down. I mean, we've got warning signs at that intersection. We've got the flashing beacon. Uh, those are kind of our, our tried and true, um, I guess, mitigation back measures. And lower cost. Uh, and the lower cost ones. Um, I, 
guessing that if somebody did a traffic study there that would meet the, the volume threshold for traffic signals, but we haven't done that. Something it would or would not? Would not. I, I think we would have to, to look don't at it. We don't certain. Right. And the traffic has increased in, right. at least, I don't know how many folds. Mm -hmm. so I can't I mean, it's, 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 it's a much busier road than it used to be. So it's on both directions coming across and on Portland Ave going to Maine or going into Dover. And, so and one of the things that we've been looking at um, it, through the highway safety program more recently for intersections like this is what we call an intersection conflict warning system. So instead of having a flashing beacon on the intersection that's on all the time and people tend to, it doesn't mean anything because it's not telling you anything different, um, there would be signs, the signs that tell you that there's an intersection ahead um, would be tied to vehicle detection on the side roads. So if, when somebody was actually present and waiting to cross, they would put warning lights on those, those intersections. Um, so we're evaluating three locations this year for putting something like that up, and if that is effective and studies show that it can reduce crashes, um, then that may replace a lot of the things that we have now. Senator Waters, did you? I may ask a couple of questions. Or, um, Absolutely. Yes. One thing I would suggest is perhaps if there was a formal request from the town to do a new traffic study at an intersection to see if it met the volume requirements, maybe you'd be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And then um, my question, a couple, um, one was to the chief about whether he feels the reduction to 50 has reduced people's speed. And the other um, one I wondered if people wanted to comment on is that coming out of Dover, uh, the old mill road, or the mill road intersection, mm -hmm. you know, the angles up there, and it does look to me as if um, the little point of land that comes down there obstructs oh, no, the view yeah. of people on Route 4 and also then people trying to come up out of that, that angle. And I, and I wondered if that was something that the town had, had, uh, had concerns about as well as the visibility at that intersection. Mm -hmm. Well, that was the site, I, I believe, the fatality, the fatality yeah. that's right. on the, right. this. Although that was for a different reason. But, right, understood. Uh, but it is, it is, there is some difficult visibility yeah. around Old Mill Lane. I mean, I really think from where Mr. Electric is, all the way to that intersection, there there might be some things that could be done to improve visibility of of people coming up for for people on Route Four to see people coming up on Mill Road, and also people on Mill Road at that stop sign looking at a quite an angle to the left to see who's coming at them. So, those are a couple of questions. How would we? formally request a traffic study to be done again? Um, Such as asking you, you I'll, I'll put it in the works when I get back to the office tomorrow, but if you want to formalize that with a, with a letter that requests sure, it, do that, that, would be a, that would be a good thing as well. Mm -hmm. um, to put it on the record that the town's interested. Um, as far as the, the site distance issue, I'm, I'm going to be um, visiting some sites in the area with, with the district engineer in the next and to reschedule from last week, so it's probably going to be in the next week or two. Um, so I can put this on a list of things to look at, see if they can do some clearing um, on the inside of that. Well, they bet they were the through. I mean, they did quite a bit of clearing this summer, the end of the fall. So it's, that has been done. So, okay. but. so Bill, what did you call the, uh, the sort of so, the beacon, placing the beacons with these sort of side warning in the approaching? Intersection conflict warning system, ICWS. There's almost an acronym. Yeah. <laughs> Intersection conflict, conflict warning system. Warning system. Thank you. Well, and you are about to deploy them in a test capacity. Right. One of the things that, because what it what it does is has a message on the on the Portland Ave approach in this case that would flash when there's somebody on the side road that's ready to cross or enter the intersection. Um, so one of the concerns I have is that if there's something wrong with the system and it's not flashing, it can send a false negative. So it tells the person on Route 4, if they could become accustomed to seeing a light on only when somebody's entering the road, mm -hmm. and, it, and there's something wrong with the system so the light's not on, it can send a message that I don't have to worry about it because there's nobody there. Uh, so what we're testing right now is um, as a way to communicate back to our TMC if there's, if there's a malfunction in the equipment so that we would be able to alert a technician and fix it in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, my fear is that we wouldn't fix it until something happened and then somebody noticed, oh, that light's not working. Because it's not like a, like a traffic signal goes hokey or people think they wait too long. I get a phone call right away. 
something like this, I don't know if that would happen. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're doing a proof of concept in our own shop right now. We've got three pilot locations that we're going to install it to, just to see if, how comfortable we, we are with it. And if, if we are comfortable, then I think we have to come up with how do we deploy this, um, how do we maintain it, um, what's, how do we get this on the street. If it's an effective device, we want to make sure we're using it. But we also have limited resources, too, and uh, we don't want to overcommit. Because mm -hmm. if, if it works, um, there's probably a few hundred intersections around the state that people would like to have them. And we'd like to have some criteria that says where, where we would use them and why. Mm -hmm. What about, <clears throat> you know, those of us who have driveways, and so if it's not an intersection, it's a driveway and making these turns. I mean, is there signage that has any effect of this that says, you know, there are 19 driveways, you know, you're about to drive through, you know, a section of road with n number of driveways. Is that, does that have any usefulness or? We've done traffic turning and entry type signs, but it, what, we, what we call occasional hazard signs, the signs that, that are only like deer crossing or, or um, intersections where you only have to worry about when somebody's actually present are not very effective because you might not see somebody entering a driveway. If it's a residential driveway, the odds that you see in somebody pulling in or out of the residential driveway are pretty thin, pretty slim. So you go by that sign a hundred times and don't see anything. You, 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 stop seeing you stop seeing it. What about uh, other common um, methods, um, turn lanes, that sort of thing? Traffic, traffic islands, that sort of thing, are they effective? Such, a such as in driveways? No, 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 at, at major intersections. Like, we're, yeah, we're, those are certainly a possibility. Road. Generally what we find though, if, if the, uh, the intersection remains unsignalized, adding a left turn lane on St. Robert's Road, mm -hmm. it would certainly help the traffic turning from Robert's Road. Because right. it gives it a refuge. Well. Yeah. It actually makes it more difficult from the side roads okay. to get onto the right. floor. And that's really, I think, where the, the, that's what the, the biggest hazard problem is. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have done some lane um, reconfiguration on some segments where you have enough turning conflicts that you take a two-lane road with wide shoulders and make it a center turn lane with two travel lanes and narrow <coughs> shoulders. Um, so you get that kind of a visual picture that says this road is different than a two-lane highway. Um, that usually follows a resurfacing project because you don't want to grind off one set of lines and put new lines on it because at night, a rainy night, it, it looks like five lanes and not, not three. Um, so that's one, I guess, concept that we have used in the past. Um, I'm not sure if this whole route has no driveways to, to warrant that, but um, something we've done more when there's commercial properties than residential properties. Chief, did, is there something that you wanted to, to do here? If I just you know, answer the Senator's yeah. question, yes, we have seen a, a dramatic decrease in the, in the speeds in the 50 zone on Portland Avenue. Over 35 zones continue to be a, a major headache for us. Um, and, and specifically with the intersection of Roberts Road, Bear Road, and Portland Avenue, um, I think the problem is one, the entrance, Bear Road and uh, Roberts Road, they're, they're too wide, so folks are taking one lane and making it two lanes, so you have a, 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 a site uh, issue with vehicles. Secondly, uh, the folks on Portland Avenue, especially during the peak travel times in the morning and the afternoon, are using the breakdown lanes at that intersection as a travel lane yes. while cars are trying to make the left-hand turns either onto Bear Road or, or Robert's Road. And that, that's the biggest issue that we have there. So I don't know if there's some way that we can, other than parking the police cruiser in, in each breakdown lane uh, during those times, prevent people from using them as a travel lane. Is there something that the state has done in the past to try to keep people on the travel lane as opposed to using the breakdown lane as a travel lane? Is there a rumble? There is not, no. That might be to, to rumble groove that uh, in between the travel lane and the, and the um, shoulder lane might give people sense that they shouldn't. No, because we stop people all the time for doing that. They say, well, everyone else passes on the right, so we assume that they're No, sorry, it's a breakdown lane. It's not a travel lane. Here's your ticket. Have a nice day. Uh, but, uh, you know, nine cars out of ten will we'll do that. Right. And rumble strips are, are an effective safety solution. Uh, it helped on 125, I think. I think it really has. Right. Um, yeah. If you yes. followed the news this year, it's pretty sensitive of the DOT because we had so much blowback 
with last year's installations that we've taken a step back to so, review our, uh, because of the noise concerns. Noise. Okay. The places that we put them, it just happened, they, they were very sensitive to the added noise. And so, the residents in the area? and so not just yeah. residents, but um, yeah. seasonal businesses. Tour, tour, yeah, yeah tourist oriented yeah. businesses. That might help here. Maybe if you're also, if you're studying the, you know, the intersection for traffic, for, for the potential signalization, you could mm -hmm. think about a plan for what the strip, the rumble stripping might do. Right. Along the, um, the lines. Yeah, and one, one thing I could offer as a, as a possible next step could be what we call a road safety audit. Um, this may be a candidate depending on, on what particular crashes and traffic lines are and whatnot, but a road safety audit is it's really an interdisciplinary, so it, it, it's, a, it's a study undertaken by not only engineers and traffic safety people, but also representatives of the town and emergency response and mm -hmm. people with a wide range of experiences and expertise, uh, people that drive it every day, for instance, to look at a location, either an intersection or a short stretch of highway, um, agree to what the problems are, and agree to a range of possible solutions. Um, so that's something that we do customarily as part of a highway safety improvement program. We, we try to target maybe three or four road safety audits a year because they're is it costly to hire an engineering firm to, to help us with this effort? Mm -hmm. um, and then we come up with a with a, an action plan to define steps that could be taken. So um, we could request a road safety audit? And, and you would request that Connell Lentz at Stratford. Oh, Connell, yeah. That. Yeah, because he's excellent at what he does. So the, the request would go through Connell? Yeah, he would help you. To, there's a form on our website that, that is filled out. And, he would help you pull together the crash records that are necessary in the traffic counts. So that may be a way for Colin and his crew to be able to do what he said Bill might be able to do with his as far as the traffic counting. Mm -hmm. um, and I should tell you that to avoid getting applications throughout the year, we've come in the last couple of years to have a, a, a deadline, an application deadline of December 1st. Um, However, this year, there may be a chance for a second application period in the summertime because we didn't have that many applicants. Uh, so that's a possibility as well. And like I said, generally look at either an intersection or a short stretch of highway. It, it would be a little unusual for us to look at such a long stretch of highway. It's really beyond our means to be able to fix a long stretch of road like that. Um, but we aren't, we aren't limited to just looking at one Highway crossing at Roberts Road. Um, one thing I would caution is that if we are looking at traffic control at Roberts Road, uh, because the corridor is pretty long, that we may be able to improve conditions there, but it may not be effective further from the intersection because traffic simply returns to their prior speeds as they are further away from the intersection. Um, but it may be a candidate for that. We do have. Uh, some certain criteria working for certain types of crashes, certain uh, severities, because again, our HSIP, the safety improvement program, is focused on uh, preventing, reducing the number and severity of fatal and serious injury crashes. So we want to have sites that have uh, sustained history of crashes. We don't want to be choosing a site that has such a, a minor history, I think this, that's the situation here, such a minor history that we have a hard time justifying investing funds into improving the condition. So we want to have a location that we can have an improvement where the, the monetary value of the crashes that we have avoided is at least equal to the, the, the investment that we're putting into it. So maybe a road safety audit is the appropriate next step, at least, at least for the intersection. So I'd say work with Colin, he knows the program well. Okay, so road safety audit, um, speed, speed audit, speed safety, what is it? Traffic safety. Traffic safety. Um, speed warning analysis for, this, for the intersection. We're going to ask you to do another speed analysis. Well, I can I can do that. I think the what I think is the intersection analysis right. to see if signals are warranted mm -hmm. there. Right. I, I certainly um, would like to get just for our own data. Uh, a follow-up speed study in the locations that we did in 2013 and now that the speed limit has changed mm -hmm. um, and see if there has been a measurable change in, in the speed of 
traffic. And when we do a speed study, it's a snapshot in time. I think we had about three hours uh, in April 2014 that we did this speed study. Um, so it's not um, necessarily statistically significant to compare apples to to apples, but it's um, it gives us a good idea. I mean, if, if we blow the speed limit five miles an hour, and the next speed study says it's five miles an hour different, that's different than what we've seen in other places. So I can do the speed study, um, but I think we we're looking to do the signal warning analysis as well. Okay. That's another question. Um, do, do the, does the presence of uh, guardrails discourage people from pulling into the um, the breakdown lane to go around cars that are paused there? She's the answer to your question. Does it, does it also discur uh, encourage people to just because they're visually there to maybe travel a little slower? That's that's the logic, right? That's the logic that we that uh, that studies have shown, but nevertheless. And there are many very constrained highways, uh, for example, like the Portsmouth Bypass, which is extremely tight, yet people drive extremely fast on it. Mm -hmm. That has all the characteristics that, that all the studies say. This is how you need to make a road look to get people to drive slower. But people well, are willing to drive fast in pretty tight well, situations. Well, I just was asking in terms of, um, you know, if you're looking at that intersection, that there are guardrails, but they don't extend very far. So, that, for mm -hmm. example, at that intersection, if they extended further towards Dover yep. or towards towards uh, South Berwick, at, at the, you know, maybe even another 100 yards or so, would that make a difference? And also in combination with the potential <coughs> of rumble stripping the, um, the line between the, the travel lane and the breakdown lane. So just, just something to, else that's not a, a terrifically expensive, but it might be another right. way of really making that visually as people are coming upon an intersection, see if this is something I really need to pay more attention to. Yeah, guardrail is not something that we want to put in to try to slow traffic down. Right. The guardrail itself is a hazard. Yeah. So we only place that when we're shielding a bigger hazard behind it. Yeah. So we really wouldn't want to do that for speed control. Yeah. But I, I think you're on the right track that probably comparing a road with guardrail to a road without guardrail, having that little bit of um, constraint on the side of the road does, uh, does get noticed by the driver. Thank you. Just about the psychology of driving. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and a lot of what we do is human factors, trying to figure out how drivers will respond mm -hmm. to different conditions. And it's a challenge. <laughs> drivers are wily. <laughs> we are a wily group, aren't we? And even the best drivers make mistakes. <coughs> and it's very difficult to make turns, yeah. left turns particularly, into high-speed traffic. Yeah. It's difficult to judge <coughs> what's an adequate gap yeah. to turn into. And if you're frustrated, if you're impatient, mm -hmm. it's all that much worse. And, and um, the, the question about discouraging people from crossing the white line is one that, that we see quite a bit. I mean, there's, there's a lot of developments that have gone in with marginal traffic impacts, and, and they don't warrant a separate turn lane because of it. And we, we tend to widen the shoulder opposite the, 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 uh, the business so that have a bypass shoulder. So I, th I think in some ways we've conditioned people to cross mm -hmm. um, the white line to go around things like that. Like on 155 in Durham, turning on the magic road. Yeah. Every morning. There's yeah. all, all kinds of examples. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, all over. Yes. Right. And, and it's kind of a catch-22 because a lot of times we provide that widened shoulder because if we don't, people are straddling the pavement and the gravel and wearing off the gravel. Right. So a paved surface will at least keep them on, on a solid mm -hmm. surface and, and not wear off the gravel. But ask our road agent. I guess just a question. Uh, that intersection is not perfectly aligned. If that was aligned properly, would that help? It would probably help. Um, mm -hmm. It'd be hard to measure how much of a benefit that would be. I think the biggest issues are probably making the left turns onto onto Route Four. But yeah, any misalignment makes it a little bit more difficult for the drivers. Yeah. Yeah, that one is definitely misaligned. Mm -hmm. But then you end up with right-of-way impacts to, to, to uh, correct something right. like that, too. Right. And those are both town roads, right? Yep. Yes. Bear Road mm -hmm. and Roberts Road. Right. Yeah. So they, they don't uh, like no, it. Roberts, no, Roberts, Roberts Road is the state, state. state road. Okay. Oh, yes. Sorry. Thank right. you. Sorry. No, 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 you were right. You were right. Yeah. You were right. That helps Ooh. us in our case at all. Two state roads intersecting. But right. 
One of the things that you said at the very beginning is that in um, residential areas, obviously it's slower. This is a four mile strip of highway where you have South, South Barber going at 25 miles an hour and Dover at 30 miles an hour at those two lights. So now we've sent your last study, I wasn't here, we sent your last study, I know we've placed two roads and at least five driveways. So I know it's still rural to the rest of the state. <laughs> but it's getting pretty busy for us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I, I'd love to see a light there. Cost effective wise, your benefit cost ratio. I hate that term because you can't put a cost on a life, period. But if rumble strips are at least the, the, the easiest way to go right now, or then so be it. But yeah, like, like Mike said, we, we put a moratorium on rumble strips until we can kind of get confidence that. And it was interesting, you mentioned 125. We put rumble strips on 125 and 111. And other places that we've done that in the past, and, and if, other than some of the bike community and some changes that were made in construction that they didn't appreciate, were praised for them. And then the following year, we put them in three what we thought were fairly similar locations and got hammered. Uh, it was no good it was no, we no yeah, right, right. So it's, uh, it's interesting, but because of the, the attention that those three locations got, we, we kind of pulled back the reins and tried to, to look at. Um, where, they, where they should be used and what our criteria should be. So, And I'm confident they'll come back, right. but it's not going to be immediate. Well, if rumble strips, you know, are a good uh, low-cost next step or one of the next steps, mm -hmm. of how would we go about requesting that? I mean, is that you? Is that you? Or how does that... Yeah, I can, I can talk to uh, the commissioner's office at the DOT see if they'd be willing, because of the moratorium that, that Bill and I mentioned, if they'd be willing to consider that on uh, a more limited basis, a targeted kind of approach rather than a systemic type approach. Um, I mean, we could set, certainly help by having a public hearing here just yeah. to, to right. you know, check in with, with and the I residents. Think that would be a smart step if we're going to pursue something like that, to get uh, a broader opinion from the residents, because that's, that's the negative that we hear, the, the noise. But from, <coughs> not from the drivers, it's from, oh, right, from the residents. The residents, right. yeah. Right. And we, some of our early installations, uh, we had one on, on 202 out in Henniker and Huffington. And the residents are, some of the residents were just irate, despite all the arguments, uh, all the fatalities that they had out there, and all the arguments for putting the normal strips in. Certain people would say, I don't care about these crashes. I need to sleep at night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a yeah. challenge sometimes. Yeah. Right. The challenge tends to be getting past the initial opposition to it, like a lot of things. As Mike mentioned, Henniker Route 9 and 202 and Henniker when we put those in. I mean, that was in the Concord Monitor on a, on a routine basis as Death Alley. I mean, they, that's yeah. what their nickname for Route yeah. 9 was. And, uh, so we had a lot of support from the emergency responders because of the number of times they had to respond to head-on crashes out there. And when we first put the rumble strips in, um, we had, still had the support of the emergency responders, but the, the residents. And there was one section that kind of dipped down with the valley and, and a valley with um, farm property on either side. So the, the noise tended to rise up into those properties. They were it's, it's especially um, vocal. Um, but after we, we decided to keep them there, years later, I haven't heard anything about them since. And because they've proven to be effective. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Our fire chief is also here. I don't, Mark, you've been listening to this. Is there anything you... I don't, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but if, if there's something you want to add to this? Yeah, all the times that you know, we do go out there an awful lot, but what uh, Chief Chief Dushan was saying is that, again, there's just a lot of issues that you got to kind of piecemeal through on which ones you want to prioritize. Mm -hmm. from, from the road agent saying it's misaligned to all the other issues that are out there. That is, um, I don't know, what do we go out there? A dozen times a year or better for different mm -hmm. types of accidents at that corner. Mm -hmm. Specifically Roberts, oh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. Bayer. Yeah, oh, at least. 
at least you know from the well, from the minor ones to the ones that we don't want to be mm -hmm. talking about. So uh, just I guess the conversation starting where we are and just kind of get that plan rolling forward and we can all get on board and see what's going to be done. Oh, did you have one? Just one, just one just, uh, not to sound cavalier about it. You can't put the cost on a fatality, right? It's it, right. You can actually put the cost on something like my son had. It's about a half million bucks, and someone's paying. I mean, society is paying. You know, his insurance company's paying. But it's real money when people get banged up, and these guys need to go scrape them up. So that's real money. I don't know what a stoplight costs these days. I guess it's something less than a half million bucks. So just something to think about. That's all. I think. Uh you know, unless there's something else, I think we need to really hit the boss to yeah. make some formal requests for some uh, studies and helps and assistance. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we can call yeah. some uh, work with Colin, I think, because he knows yeah. the process. He's, yeah. he's, he's, he's part a, of he's our a great resource. He's, he's a wonderful and he's wonderful. Yeah, yeah we will yeah. definitely work with Colin. And he's part of our HSIP committee, so he's dialed into the process pretty uh, effectively. Excellent. We will do that. So, thank you so much for coming. Right. I appreciate it. Hope thank you have a safe trip home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Believe me, that was a very smart thing we did the last time. Yeah, yeah. It was. Would have been completely oh, yeah. ironic to have you go over and go over that night. Yeah. Exactly. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you So we had to purchase some new ones, and this purchase order is for, it's called a, the plumbing on the truck is a six inch valve, which comes in, and we changed the six inch threaded valve into what's called the Storts, which is basically a quarter turn thing, which will lock the incoming hose in place. And instead of sticking out 18 inches like the other one does, this is only four. So it allows us to hook it to the fire truck and take water in and do what we need. So as I said, it's fire safety at USA, it's the episode 1334, and it's for two of these devices, total $315. Mm -hmm. Purchase order number 1334 of Fire Safety USA Incorporated for fitting for engine two for, sorry, I told me already, I forgot it doesn't say here, four inch stores to a six inch female. 
fittings for three hundred fifteen dollars. Just reading what it says on the page. I know. I'm trying to explain it. It gets pretty confusing. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. marker or something that would that we can refer back to if there ever there's ever a question about this is the date that we put the new engine in service. Is that we don't do this very often. No, <laughs> no we don't. So um, basically uh, you talk official markers just like today's the day. I think today is the day all the equipment is here. People have not reached the training and this is the day it's going to go in service. So maybe what you could do is let the board know and we can at least record it in our minutes. This is the date that we put it in service, and so if somebody is just trying to pin mm -hmm. that at some point, yep. we would have it. Can do that for you. And once we have that date, right, then, I, then that gets puts in motion our other requirements for the grant. Okay. So we have 15 days uh, in which to, I, I think it's 15 days in which we have to take the other one out of service and perform final bites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right, that's correct. And I just, well, I wanted to come up with least tonight and make sure we were all on the same page and we were going to get you back because today is the 5th, and I can comfortably say by the 15th that the fire truck will be in service. Yeah, let me see. Let me do it. So that gives us a two week window at the end of the month to call it. Because the state needs to come down with it. They, 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 need to, to, they need to be okay. advised. They need advised. to know. They want to know whether, or not, whether or not they send someone. Okay. That, that will be their choice. I'm going to see if I can, uh, I can find that. Some of the other emails that you might have in the waiver letters and all that, some of the information is in there. But I wanted to make sure we were looking for it. Go through the proper steps. I know that was an issue before. I'll have to go back and look at the, but I believe from the time we take one out, we take one, the, we put the new one in service, then we have a certain amount of time to take the other one out. It maybe it's maybe it doesn't have to be uh, destroyed in those 15 days, but it definitely has to be out of service. We should not be using it in those 15 days. I I will look up the terms of the grant and let you know. But uh, all of this has to be done by the end of March. But but. But the first, the first, it's going to have, it's going to happen sooner than that because you're ready to put it into service. So. Yeah, it's just time to move on. Yeah. So if you, back in order, send it down, down the road. if you let me know, then uh, I will just let Liz know that we put it into service and we're now arranging for uh, the company that you've talked to. The, the, yeah, the Berwick. Yeah. Sell it here. Yeah. Later on, two thirty-six. And then we'll. Yeah. And then, then we have to prove it. 
there's the certifications or pictures or this or that. Certificate of destruction. Yes. Yeah. It's dire, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it, it is, is dire. It's, it's, it's just, but I, you know, I, I, I can look at it and say, you know, $119,000 coming back from the community that we might have got anywhere else. We would never have sold it for that money. 110. It is. I know it's difficult. Yeah. But they're doing this in order to get it off the roads because it spews. That's the other thing. Yeah. Come over and stand next to them in front of it, and you'll understand why. Yeah. <laughs> so it's an environmental issue. Yeah. Yeah. So it's blow through money from the EPA in order to. So it's like the clunker. Remember we did the clunker, getting clunkers off the road. So many years back, as a way to sort of put some cash into the economy, but also to get rid of some of these. So it's a little bit like that. All right, I just wanted to let you know that. Well, thank so you, I appreciate that. And I will send you. You can see me on Monday night next week, say it's in service, and we'll start the clock ticking. Okay, and goes. we aren't meeting two weeks from now, just to, just saying that. Um, but next week. holiday? Yeah, it's President's Day. But I'm going to say, so the, you thought the 15th is next Thursday. You think you'll be, you'll be in full service by then? Is that what you're thinking? I am. So by March 1st, you'll be probably out of that disposed of. Yes, I'm going to follow up and make sure we get the arrangements with the, with the junkyard for yeah. that stuff, and they're ready to go. So I just want to come in. So you think it's going to be in service? I missed that. On what day? Yeah, I thought that was right, the 15th. 15th? Yeah, I'm sure. That's next Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Quick, All right, well, I'll let Liz know that that's our, you know, an approximate date, and I'll review the things that happen next, and then mm -hmm. we'll, at least she'll be on notice. Um, How should I get the 14th Valentine's Day? How do you want to spend your Valentine's Day? Or, well, I'm sorry that you're like the can't breakfast this past weekend, because I haven't seen the, our, our new, our newest uh, they just room. didn't have a room. <laughs> yeah. exactly. The way the place is stuff full of yeah. fire trucks right now, if we move everything out and you know get the place set up for it, we're going to reduce just the amount of parking that people can have. I wonder if it right had now, to do we anything. Have, we have things all crooked and yeah. not next to each other, jumbled in spaces, and keep everything inside. Mm -hmm. So it, it's time to move that on down the road, mm -hmm. get back to home. We're hoping to get the breakfast done by March, but we'll see. Okay. All right. All right. There you go. Thank you so Very much. Good. Have a nice evening. Thank you too. I think you're all gone. I'll leave your door open unless you want okay. to close it. Okay. Perfect. Thanks. No, that's Thank good. You. Thank you. All right. So we're town uh, town administration, and uh, when I pushed out some information I earlier today, I, I said that we're looking. One thing we really need to do tonight is to review the warrants, especially those of the probations. This is not the final warrant because there could be petitions that arrive tomorrow. We have a couple on here for tonight, too. Are there petitions? Yeah, I saw a couple. Is it time for that now? Doing well, I, I would, I, I'm just curious to know. There's Shall we adopt SB2 for this one? I think the only one there. And uh, see if the town will vote to establish a historical committee expendable trust fund. To okay. More. So, and all there's right. something in here that could be one. I don't know. I doubt it. But. No. Okay. So, well, neither is it. Neither of these is an appropriation, so that's fine. Right. No. No. What you said. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Were two so, but one of them requires a public hearing, so we will. Oh, and there's, uh, a, there's the other one about um, the uh, you already know about this one, the road resurfacing. Yes, we have that. Okay. That that one does have an appropriation, yeah. so that's already in there. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> I sent a draft. Let me bring up. Let me bring it up here. So. Uh, I don't have printed copies. Do you? Okay, perfect. All right, so um, we uh, we can do this any one of a number of ways. We just do it uh, an article at a time. Maybe we should do that at least through the operating budget, and then then maybe we can couple some together. So the first one that, that um, is the Kino article, and I know we recommended this moving it forward. I don't know if we actually did the rec we want to recommend it to the town. Yeah, I don't think we did. Okay.
Okay, so so if that's something that we think we'd like to do, I will entertain a motion. Uh, move that we, uh, the select board, recommend Article 2 relative to Kino. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 So I will. That comes before town officers, huh? It's crazy. It, it's on the ballot. Right, right, right. It's no, on the I ballot. know. It's, it's, that's right. I forgot. We're not, it's not something to town meetings. Right. It's going I'm to be on the ballot. ballot. All right. All right. So then there's other town officers. So now, so now we're at the business meeting right, right, of the right. town officers. So the first first one is the operating budget. And I have the the budget committee will find out about this, but I realized as I was starting to enter this into the um, DRA tax portal that our financing costs have to be part of the operating budget. So this figure, 1959860 mm -hmm. is the Budget Committee recommended operating budget, bottom line, plus the financing, the cost of financing, which was in the budget that we presented to them, but not as part of the operating budget. All right, so this is not our... Um, this is not our budget? This is not our budget. No. This is theirs? Yes, this is theirs. Um, I uh, personally would, would like to not recommend this one, and if you'd like me to speak to that, I can, or we can put it on the floor and start to talk about it. We'll raise the whole thing first. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate, the Budget Committee recommended sum of one million nine hundred and fifty nine thousand eight hundred and sixty for general and municipal operations. This article does not include appropriations contained in special or individual articles addressed separately. It's, it's, it's the language that it always has. That's yeah, not a different language. But of course this this is absent the two hundred and fifty thousand that was removed. Oh, that's right. yeah, yeah. No, I which that was not an yeah. It's not an action that legal guidance has said should have happened. So, did I say it loud enough? I didn't say it loud enough. I, I would move that we not recommend Warren Article 4. I second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no? No. Okay, so we are not recommending that. Um, Article 4. Do, is there a reason why we should do these separately, or can we can we um, collapse the purchase of the service truck, the purchase of roadside Boeing, purchase of the police cruiser? I think you should do them separately. All right. Then Article 5 is the purchase of the service truck for the Rollinsford Highway Department for uh, $42,000 to outfit and purchase. To recommend. I lost the... To recommend it. We have a motion to recommend that article. Motion to recommend Article 5. I'll second that. <laughs> uh, any discussion? All right, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. Okay, it's recommended by the board. <laughs> article 6 purchase roadside Boeing attachment for the Rollinsford Highway Department for 12000 By the way, the service truck is coming from capital improvement and the roadside Boeing from capital improvement. So what does the board want to do with regard to recommending or not recommending purchasing the roadside building attachment for 12000 you want to do that one, Jordan? Sure. Recommend, uh, I recommend Article 6, purchase roadside mowing attachment for highway department. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 So we are recommending that one. Purchase the police cruiser for the Rollsford Police Department for $45,000, also coming from the Capital Improvement Reserve Fund, so no, no taxation. So we recommend Article 7. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 So recommended. Let me, I'm sorry, let me, um, I'm not, uh, I'm highlighting them, so I want to make sure that. Do you have a police cruiser? Yes. yes. Thank you. All right. All right. So now I'm at Article 8. So this is adding uh, $178,200 to the Capital Improvement Reserve Fund. Move Article 8. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor of recommending Article 8 say aye. 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 aye.
Article 9, the Culvert Repair Replacement Reserve Fund. This article adds 10000 to that fund. Move to accept Article 8. Uh, 9. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor of recommending Article 9, say hi. Aye. 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 I'll move Article 10. Okay, Michael moves Article 10. Second. Any discussion? Well, what is that? A article 10 is Conservation Land Trust Capital Sorry. Reserve Fund. Adding ten thousand, which has no which has no impact on taxation because it comes from the, the uh, land use change tax fund or fund balance. If there is no balance in, in the locked fund, but there actually is a balance. So, all right. So uh, there's a motion to recommend. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Article 11, land surveys and related, related expenses. This votes to raise an appropriate $5,000, but it will come if we need to, to if we need it from the Conservation Land Trust Capital Reserve Fund, so no taxation in fact. Any discussion? All those in favor of recommending Article 11 say aye. 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 Article 12, I recommend we table this because it's the Housing Standards Ordinance and it's still being worked on, actually. Yeah, so I'm going to uh, keep it highlighted uh, because we haven't uh, done it. There's no financial impact on It has no financial impact, but if we were ready, we could have done it. And then the rest, oh, not, not the rest, there is one more. So Article 13 is road resurfacing, sidewalk repairs, and road drainage. Uh, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate 250000 for road resurfacing, sidewalk repairs, and road drainage improvements. This is by petition. This is not our article. Recommend to accept Article 13. Do I, have, uh, do I have a motion not to recommend Article 13? I would usually not recommend Article 13. <laughs> I second that. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. No. Well, it's not an appropriation. No, but we're here, so can, we might as well. Can we do road name? Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Move Article 14, changing the name of uh, Cedar, Cedar back Lane to back to Calvin Drive. <laughs> Second. Uh, Any discussion? All those in favor of recommending Article 14 say aye. 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 Article 15 is the authority to sell surplus equipment. Do I have a motion to recommend that? Motion to accept Article 15. Second. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor of recommending Article 15, say aye. 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 Right. Okay. So, and then obviously the dates need to be changed at some point. So we still have um, Housing standards. And, and we have to, yeah, yeah. So we'll get these. So, right, so we'll have to get these in the warrant and then act on them next as far as recommend or recommend. The, now, the SB2, let me get out of this. SB2 requires a hearing. Yeah, and it goes on the Yes, it does. So uh, we have, let's see, Kino on the 12th. Next week. I suggest that we not do a Saturday, that we do it on a... Does it need to, yeah, because we did that last time again. Yeah, I think we ended up, whatever it was, we ended up meeting at the school afterwards. So, I'm not sure I fully remember all the details. Maybe it had to do with President's Day or something like that. I think the meeting was on a Monday night. I mean, after the, the hearing. We had in a bigger room, yeah. Oh, okay. So it's just, oh, just because of the size. Oh, I see. All right. So I think that if we did, um, so. Pardon? Sorry, go ahead. I don't know. Um, I think, I don't, I don't think that there's, um, I think if we wait till the 26th, I think that, that would be okay. Well, that, um won't meet the same, it'll meet the requirements for the timing. Sure well, we don't have to put, it, we don't have to put this one in the newspaper. It doesn't okay. have to be, okay. um, right. we have to post it, clearly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that gives you 15 days. 
the 26th before town meeting. Yeah, that's exactly 15 days. And um, when um, the town reports will need to be printed. Be yeah, we should probably try to do it before, actually. Can you do it on the, can we do it right after keynote? Yeah, no reason not to. We, what we could do is, so we can do a couple of things. We could it's say, starting at six. pardon? Keynote starting at six. Right. But we have to set a time. We, we have to set a time where that, uh, where we won't start any earlier than that time. And we could say we could start later. Do you know what I mean? So we could say 6.30. All right. I don't think Kino will be too busy. No, I don't think so either. Mm -hmm. So Does that give us a, too much time? Uh, I don't know. I, um, we need seven days notice, though. We're, we're not going to have seven days notice. That's the issue. We could possibly come in the week that we're not meeting and hold a quick public hearing, then if there is any outstanding business, we can always stay and have a business meeting, like maybe the Tuesday or... Yeah, I mean, it's a, um, it's a busy time of year, so... So that would be... Um, I'm not doing anything on the 19th. Right, but it may not be the best day for people, you know... Getting people to come anyway, Getting so. people to come in. Is it school, vac that school vacation week, mm -hmm. or is that the week For uh, Maine week it is, for New Hampshire it's not. Brownsford and it's done. Yeah, well, yeah, because they go by Maine now. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So what about the 20th? Do you want to do it at 6? Do you want to do it at 6.30? Because they would, you know, we do it at 6 because there's a meeting. It's, I can, I can do 6 or 6.30 that day. So 12.20. Michael, do you have a... 6 is fine. Then. So it's a Tuesday. Can you can you do that? Yeah. Six o'clock. It'll be here. I don't I don't see a reason to do it elsewhere. Do you? Uh, last year, I think uh, the amount of people that were that showed up last year could probably be good. It'd be a tight. I think it'll work. We didn't have as many people that thought we were gonna have last year. You know, sometimes. I think, you know, it's already been discussed. People have already seen it. I mean, it's... 6 p.m.? 6 p.m. here. It's yeah. February 20th. Tuesday. Tuesday. The 20th. Okay. So, the, so then we'll... What happens? Um, are we going to have a, try to have a business meeting afterwards? Uh, well, we, we'll notice yeah, it. We'll post it, it, it just if, as necessary. Okay. We're going to just cancel it. Yeah. We'll post it. Yeah. All right, so, uh, so some of the others, so I, I put on the agenda, I think it came out of your copies. I think it was soon enough putting it in. So tomorrow is the last day for petition or an article. Uh, so there could still be some others. Uh, on the 12th, so that's next Monday, I'd like us to sign the warrants and begin posting. Mm -hmm. On the 26th, uh, I've invited Charlie to meet with us to review the, our moderator, to review the warrants with okay. him to prepare for town meeting. Um, I've drafted a voter's guide. I sent you a link for that. Uh, I'm entering stuff in the DRA tax portal, to, uh, which we have to do now. Uh, let's see, we do have at least one child care provider for town meeting day. Oh, yes, I got information on that. Um, up to 10 kids, no one younger than five. Because she's by herself. Okay. 
Okay, so we can advertise that unless we get more. And my kids take up two, so you got eight left. I offered to go sit and babysit, but they said no. Okay. <laughs> All right, we have two town, two public hearings, one on Kino, and now one on SB2. Right. Um, and I don't know what B, B says SB2 schedule. Do you have a B in your agenda? Does it say SB2 schedule? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, what that means. Unless maybe somebody saw that, maybe Caroline saw that petition and added so that. So is it a schedule that we have to keep to? Well, we've got to have, we've got to post the public right. notice. But I didn't put that SB2, I'm just wondering if that's something else. I think maybe Caroline added that. Maybe she saw the petition. Because mm -hmm. I, I didn't know. Okay. All right. So, um, unless somebody knows something else about SB2, I think that's the only reason that it's there. So I'm going to march on to talk about black bean. Yes. So, Michael, would you like to introduce Apparently that? Apparently they doubled the size of their establishment and then didn't get any permits or the okay from the planning board or the okay from our planning inspector <coughs> or the fire department to sign off on it. So I would suggest we send Mr. Clark over, have a conversation with him. Yes. Sounds like a good plan. <clears throat> I, uh, I did stop by because I noticed that they had the door. I said, isn't that the doable place? I said, no, apparently not. So I went in and said, hey, when did you all double the size of your restaurant? Well, we did it back in November. I said, no. I may have culpa, I didn't notice it for a month or so, or two, apparently. So, but, well, um, I, I don't typically go in there, but. Um, my, my confession is that I was in there a couple weeks ago for breakfast and it, Never dawned on you. Never dawned on me because right. I was there just having breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways. Yeah. So they do have to go through just like any other business or yeah. okay. any other commercial enterprise in town. They need to. Uh, I mean, there there could be life safety concerns with you know uh, what the fire department may have. But I don't know. It could be a whole other thing. So. Was there a reason Clark's why Tom couldn't about. just go on his own and why we had to talk first? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the reason I say that is because it's another, you know, that he's our building inspector, so aren't yeah. there some things that autonomously he can sort of do? I don't know. Yeah. 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 Because, I mean, if we find, out, on on if we find yeah. out about this on Tuesday and have yeah. to wait for a meeting, that's a, right. you know, that's a lot of time. Yeah. So. And I don't, know how they blew, I don't know how they expanded, but if they blew out a wall, did they put in support beams or were they already there? I haven't been down there. Yeah, it was, it's just a doorway right now. Yeah. But nonetheless, I mean, but when you open up the yes. doorway... No, I mean, it's, it's, it's exactly what you're saying. They yeah. opened up the, yeah. almost the entire wall. Yeah. And it's like, it's framed up. I don't know. Right. Okay, so we will instruct Tom to, uh, to go do that. Uh, old Highway Shed Demolition Asbestos, we've taken care of that. Thank you. Um, Lamprey Regional Waste Cooperative Report. Yes. So, um, thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. I was happy to do it. So, I caught so, up with some old friends that I didn't even know were on. Okay. So, <laughs> so, would you? I, I, I'll tell you what I'm most interested. In. I, yeah. I was. I, I saw the amount of money that they're. You know that our hauling rate is based on. Yeah. All of those uh, figures, and so they. It's going to be $65 Six, yeah. per ton and uh, $6 per mile. But what I was most interested in, and I think that was not in those reports, is that after 2018, mm -hmm. what is our obligation? If we want to well, remove ourselves from the truck The truck the consortium? Yes. Yes. Um, the short answer is they're recalculating the, the cost because they, they got some uh, additional data that um, was contained in the audits that they hadn't factored in. Rollinsford was paying, um, I left that pad of paper in the car. Got here later, I'm sorry. Um, almost 8,000, I think it was, was our portion, maybe 7,900. And we were 36% um, <coughs> of the, of the uh, um, final uh, payout. So, I'm seeing Higher. Madbury was much lower, but Madbury also houses and maintains the truck, so I guess they 
a deal that was struck year, long before any of us were here. So. Yeah. Um, and I don't remember the other communities that what their portion is. There are four or five. So oh, there are. So yeah, they, they are. They're, they're recalculating. So at some point they are, yeah. over the next several months, we'll both be able to give us that figure. And so they okay. um, they plan on meeting sometime in March. So you may get out of the duty, or you may <laughs> depending on when they want to do it. I don't know. I I'll said, that, I said that I would pass it on to you. Yeah, so. Valerie. Hey, Valerie was. Reappointed, renominated as um, secretary mm -hmm. treasurer, and um, Joe. Joe. What's Jay Moriarty. Yeah. Uh, what, no, 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 no. Jay is retired. Paul is the chair. Paul was uh, re um, renominated and left as chair again. Oh, he said he was going to step down. I think he wanted to, but yeah. no one else on the. Yeah. Did you see everybody raise their hand so fast? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That was a nice group of folks. Huh? They had a quorum. And more than enough people yeah. actually was shot. Uh, Valerie was shot too, so. She was worried. But um, yeah, they were worried, but you know, it was a lively discussion about um, costs. Yeah, Trying to keep it going. They honored Jay for his you know, many years of service. He yeah. was the last of the original uh, creators. Yeah. There at Jansen. I think he mentioned that to me. Okay. Well, thank you, Mike. Yeah, we look forward to that. seeing that. So uh, we're slowly getting uh, annual reports in from various folks and uh, committee chair uh, committee recommendations or vacancies and that kind of like. So uh, they're on the Google Drive if you want to take a look at them. Um, oh, I, I added that right. You probably don't have this. I have a G that says JJ registration. I got a call from Jim Jalbert um, shortly before I headed over here. And really, I thought that I'd taken stupid pills this morning because I didn't really understand what he was getting at enough. So I'm going to try to explain it. And um, So he has, a, he had two vehicles that he sold mm -hmm. and is replacing with a new vehicle mm -hmm. that the registration fee for which is higher than some of the other two. That's the fees that you already paid. Pardon? That's the fees that you already paid. Yep. Yeah. But his question is, so and and then so two vehicles that he's replacing with one. Mm -hmm. One of these two vehicles uh, had a lot, he, you know, all things being equal, he would transfer that registration to this new one. Okay. But he wants the license plate of the other one because it's a license plate that he needs, a low number license plate that he got. The vehicle for the bus? No, this is, these are cars. These are cars. Well, then he needs to discuss it with the Department of Maintenance. If it's a, if it's a loaded plate, he has to, it's issued to the commissioner's office, or the director's office. All right, so anyway, he talked to um, Kate, our town clerk, who said she can't do anything about it. She sh he should talk to us. So I, I'm not sure. I don't. I have one of those. I have my plate number no, no, is it's it's too lower than his. What I'm saying to you is that he needs to, if it's his I'm personal vehicle, he has, to, he has to go to talk to them in Concord. To if he wants to transfer the plate number, yes. Kate isn't allowed to do anything with those plates. Oh, okay, maybe that's what it was. Okay. When my wife and I got married, and she changed her name. All I wanted her to do was change it from her maiden name because she couldn't even do that. Oh, I had to go to Concord to have it. Yeah, so they don't. So. Okay, so you talked to the I'm state. sorry, but he. All right, fair I'm a fellow good. sufferer, and he has to go do that. So All right. If he wants to keep it, if not, then I'm sure they'll be happy to put it back in circulation. But. Okay. RG. 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 Which is the O Street Boundary of Nothing to Add. Uh, Rec Committee, would you like to talk about online registrations? Yes. So we were, we were looking into online registrations, and I had a webinar with um, Sports Engine, who bought out SI Play, which is another. Sports Illustrated, the one you were talking yep. to last time. Yep. Mm -hmm. So they can customize. Um, 
the website with us. Um, they can pay, parents can pay weekly, um, they can pay in full, they can check off the marks that they want, like the weeks that they want. They, all the consent forms can be signed online. They took what we already had on our, they went to our, website, our town website and saw it last year's. And they said, oh yeah, we can input that for you, no problem, and we'll customize it with you after you mm -hmm. sign our contract. Um, there's also an option for parents to buy insurance. So if their kid breaks a leg or they move or whatever, they get their money back, but it doesn't come out of our pocket. Mm -hmm. So we get our money for the dates that they had already paid, and um, the insurance company pays them mm -hmm. the difference. Um, he answered all my questions. Um, Dan uses it with his hockey team. Called it? Yes, and he liked it. Um, Kelly and Dee. What's the name of the company? Sports, sports Engine. engines. So, okay. usually designed mostly for sports, but they can do parks and rec too. Mm -hmm. So, are there any startup costs? Um, there is a startup cost. He said originally two fifty. I said, "Oh, I'll need a purchase order for that." He immediately says, "Oh, I can drop it down to two hundred. And I'm like, "Okay,", okay. <laughs> which I don't need a purchase order for. But the easiest way to pay for it is to just use the town credit card. So I just needed your approval. Um, to go ahead and do it, and to allow Caroline to use the town credit card to just... And the operating costs are covered by the parents, right? The, the operating the costs are covered by the parents. Yeah. So what happens is that, like, say they pay for um, two weeks at once, and that transaction is $80, and their cost is 2% or whatever it is. So it ends up being, like, $83, or $84, or whatever it is. Yeah, they pay the transaction. Yeah, so I do that with softball, with baseball, and everything else. It should certainly streamline the process. Yeah, yeah. It, and it, it can sounds create like Excel spreadsheets for our auditor. It can keep track of awesome. your parents. It'll keep yeah. track for you. And you can you can run all these searches by shirt size and, I don't know, like age group. and Data is you know. wonderful, isn't it? Oh. Yes. <laughs> and the um, the director and the committee be able to have oversight and be able to do whatever they need to do. To yes, we can make um, as many administrators as we'd like. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm assuming a selectman, um, Caroline, and the directors and commit rec committee will figure that out um, before we decided if I was running or not. You had said I was going to be oversighting the rec, so you guys are going to have to figure that out. Or I'm still going to be, I'm, I'm still going to ask to stay on rec, and that'll be up to you guys, it, whoever gets elected. Yeah, I don't think that we want to push back or push back on that. So, um, and then you can figure out who you want to yeah. oversight that. So, my question is, Jody, uh, is this a, a a path? Once we decide to do this, then does do they have to, does one have to do online registration? No, they can still do manual registration if it comes to us or wherever. We just data entry it ourselves. So, yeah. so, so you can enter it, but there's no fee or anything like that? Is that? that well, they'll pay their $40 and they don't get the 2% processing fee because we're entering it. And there's so, no we, so, so it does provide us with one location, even for people who are not using the online system to pay. Is yes. That, Yes, yeah, so they can register their kid and set and hit the button that says I'm mailing in a check. Ah, uh, I see. So you are we are going to require everyone to do online registration. They don't need to choose. They don't need to choose to pay online. Right. We can make them. We don't have to make them. They can still if somebody's still not into the yeah. 20th, 20th century or <laughs> 21st century. And still likes paper and hands it to us, we can still data entry it and put okay. it in. But it will all be in one place. Yes. It will all be there, whether they've used the system to pay yep. or not. Yes. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That, that sounds all like four. it. Yeah. So I, I thought just streamlining that alone would save Caroline so many hours. Yeah. So I don't I don't think we actually need a formal vote. It's two hundred dollars. It's within the limits. So you okay. and Caroline could yep. and we were gonna take it out of um, basketball, because we're not going to use that whole basketball line this year. Yeah, but it's really for summer rec, isn't it? Yeah. It should come out but of summer rec. But it's still rec. rec. And we could use it for basketball maybe next season if we have basketball. It would be accounted for under summer rec, but I think the actual money is going to come from the line for basketball. I think it's very yeah, but I mean, the, the, yes. 
Yes. So our auditors are not zero. It, yeah. the, truth, the truth is that you know, we have, what we have to figure out, we haven't done yet, is what level of detail, if any, do we want in our, in our town's budget for summer rec? Mm -hmm. Like, for example, the library, we just really have, I don't even know why we have two lines, we have two lines, library, director, and then all the rest of the budget. Yep. We don't have any detail. Same is true for, for cemetery trustees, we just have one line. So, so they're keeping that. But they have trustees. Yeah. And the rec committee doesn't have trustees. So, I mean, I'm just kind of talking they about. The, yeah, well, right. right. But they, it's so, budget. it's our budget, exactly. Yeah. So, in the past, we did do more itemization of mm -hmm. things than, than right now we're doing. You know, because last year we got the figure very late, we just plugged it in whatever it was, 30 so odd thousand. Mm -hmm. And you know, this year was a pretty complicated budget, so you know, I just chose, I put, there's a summer rack, there's a winter rack, three lines. No, summer, Camp Raleigh, teen. Yeah, senior. And senior, yeah, whatever. Yeah, so, you know, day. yes, yeah. but I mean, the major, some of the major yeah. ones. So the question is, and we don't have to answer this now, but. We can go back to more itemized. Yeah. And the old, the old town book had it. Yes. Yeah. So, yes. So we'll, we'll talk about how best to, to do that. Yeah. The other thing for REC is that that second credit uh, checking account that was found. Yes. Um, at Citizens is now closed. I checked Not Citizens. Service Federal. Service Federal. Thank you. Um, yeah, that one's closed too. <laughs> Um, is the service with someone cl did they, they close it today? today? I checked with Caroline. So oh, and it has yay. they and it has a slightly over a thousand dollars. She said that's what we were anticipating. So yeah. that sounds good too. Yes. Good so silver lining for the record. So we don't have that anymore. Which would pay for the more than pay. pay. Yes. <laughs> so a check was cut to the town from service credit union. I didn't get that much detail. The treasurer, I think the treasurer, Kayla, we had to have Kayla manage right, it. And the that. treasurer will do whatever she needs to do. I don't know if Caroline is more but yeah, yeah, and Tom, our auditor, was looking for the figure so that he could complete gotcha. his stuff. Well, that, that's a... Awesome. That, that is good news. Thank you. And we need to get on Sunday. All right. Sunday? Okay. Sunday. Uh, job descriptions, I'm afraid it's going to have to wait until like, some of this other stuff gets done because I've, I've got two of them and I have to find them. And are we, I think we're, uh, all right, we're into standing items. So board member activities and updates. Michael? Planning board meeting tomorrow night. Planning well. board? Please don't forget about the stormwater. I'm trying I have to that asked out. the chairman to put it on the agenda. All right, excellent. And Joe, you've got rec. I have rec on Sunday. I don't have anything else going on. And our, the public hearing on the town on the our town's budget is Saturday at nine o'clock. Yes. And there is a budget committee meeting this week on uh, this Wednesday. So, although it's going to snow, so we'll see what happens. Not sure what the purpose of it is, but let's see. All right, building permits. Right, I got one building permit and a few other things. Uh, building permit number is 2017-066, 5 Cricket Lane. First one is from the town clerk. It is purchase order number 1389. It is to IDS. I think it IDs. There's no apostrophe there. Um, 
is for uh, the 2018 dog tags, dog licenses, uh, for $235.89. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Make sure you have an opportunity. Someone was asking me about that the other day. I said they're not even in yet. No, that's not in the dark tanks. The next one is uh, also from the time clerk is purchase order number 1390. It's to Inclusion Solutions. It is for a uh, sample voting booth and the amount of $700. That's the one of last year? Yeah, it's in the budget. One of the budget. Yeah. In her budget, right? Yeah. yeah. The three way, one's handicap, and two are standing. Yeah. Yep. What is it called? Sample voting booth. Sample. Okay. I don't know why it's called sample. Did well, you second or did you not second? I was like, yes. Okay. Uh, so so my I, question it was in her budget, right? Uh, so. it was in, it's in her budget. I did ask, I asked her, I said, uh, Kate, if you think it would be helpful for throughput you know, to get people through, uh, if another voting uh, would help for March. Uh, you know, put in the purchase order. We'll we'll look at it. You know, it's in your budget. Yeah. Uh, we've done it before, so it's not a new purpose. So, so she. That's it. So, are there other comments or questions? All those in favor, say aye. 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 And Chief just handed us. This is your non public. Yep. And this is a brick order. They're um, everywhere, aren't they? I know, right? Depends on what department you're coming from. Uh, purchase order 1377 to Sunday at Sign Company for 10 public signs and election signs. Um, stickers to change date for town meeting signs for a total of $260. Second. So these are to update the signs, the sandwich board signs. Mm -hmm. so the stickers are to update the town meeting ones, but the ones that are up now are two-sided. So <clears throat> after this meeting, they'll be flipped over and they'll have their election sign. Well, that's clever. That's, good. Mm -hmm. that's very clever. Excellent. Where are we putting them? Someone says that we should put them at the transfer station, too. Where I are believe we there is one of the transfer stations. One of our A frames, like mm -hmm. okay. There are five, well, actually six locations. Okay. Just groups. Yeah. George and Ed have took that. That's great. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's wonderful because they're heavy. Well, the ones from the school are heavy, and the ones from here are awkward. Either way, so, not good. No. So your question is whether or not. This should be done in non-public. No, not. No, no, I know that. I know, that, I know that's not. <laughs> Sorry, I'll wait till we finish. All right, so it's I've, the motion is on the floor to accept purchase order for two hundred sixty dollars for signs relating to town meeting. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Yeah, at this point, Michael, that's my question. So, I mean, is this isn't this public? Can't we? Isn't that? I would uh, to. I would think that. What you would want to do is just say, we have a we're, we have we are in receipt of a letter from our attorney, in uh, relative to a uh, right to know request by President X. The letter's on file. I don't think you have to say anything more, no. right? Because I mean, it's, it's not a the only part that was non-public was the was guidance. The, the, the guidance from the attorney. So. so but I mean, it's not a. In the, this is no longer guidance now, this is a letter. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a public letter, yeah. which, I think, from the select board. So I. Well, select board's legal counsel. Right. So it's, 
I don't think we need to get into any more detail than that. But. Right. So what I will say then is that the, the board, through its legal counsel, has responded to right to know request that went through uh, a Dover attorney, attorney Azarian. So we uh, responded to that. That's all I have to say. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we already addressed that. All right. So we're done except for this? Yeah. All right. So any community input? Can I ask a question? Oops, sorry. Go ahead. Can I ask a okay. question? If at town meeting, I mean if at um, a public hearing, there is um, capability of putting the 250000 back into the road project. Yes. What happens to the petition warrant well, article? That's a good question. So you can't touch once the, once you've got a warrant article. Yeah. By petition, it, it goes in. So what legal counsel has suggested is that at town meeting, mm -hmm. assuming that the two hundred fifty thousand goes back in the operating budget, mm -hmm. that at town meeting, uh, the guidance is to ask for an amendment from the floor to reduce that to one dollar. Okay. Reduce the appropriation to one dollar. And he may have had some additional language to make sure that the purpose of, of providing road surfacing isn't isn't destroyed, you know, by mm -hmm. reducing it to a dollar. Okay. So, so it, okay. Is that helpful? yes? So you're not going to add it in addition to if it got added in after the public hearing, it's not put it. It's not going to give you two hundred fifty dollars. Correct. Before. That's not okay. Before. Okay. That's not because you have to still do it by petition. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Nancy. Um, as far as the petition goes, it can be vote. It can be asked for an amendment, but doesn't it have to come from the person, from someone that petitioned, from one of the petitioners? Not a town meeting. No, no, town meeting. Town meeting. Oh, is a town meeting. Body. Yeah. The budget committee can't touch appropriate. Can't touch foreign articles, mm -hmm. which is why at the school public hearing, it was not. It was not legal. Or anyone to offer an amendment on to change the amounts on the school warrant articles. Mm -hmm. the, the budget committee can't touch uh, the, uh, pro, the warrant articles other than the operating budget. Mm -hmm. So, so does that? Um, yeah, that, yeah, I understand. Yeah, Thank you. you. Both yeah. questions can be answered. Okay, yeah. Celia. Um, I was very interested tonight. The road agent said he was going to do a sidewalk survey. When that happens, will the public be notified? Or yeah, a chance to give input and so forth. Well, I'm, what sort of input? I mean, he's, well, he, this is something that I anticipate he would just do when he had time and, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, not necessarily well, a formal he's taking a, he's project. He's taking an inventory of the sidewalks and the, the way they are and what needs to be done. Because in my neighborhood, they've been either paved into driveways or overgrown, so you wouldn't know unless you live there, that there was a sidewalk there. Well, so here's what I think will happen. You know, we, we're putting more and more data on the website. So as he builds this and we put it on the website, we'll let people know and it will be open. So, so one could go look at it and say, oh, well, this sidewalk is missing or, or whatever. Okay. If, is that helpful? Yeah, and in regards to the traffic study, there is a sign in... Berwick, I don't know if it's Berwick or Lebanon, Maine, that comes up on one of their main routes that the gentleman was talking about tonight that tells you car approaching from right, car approaching from left. So you've seen yeah, yeah, some of those, really. Yeah. So, so they're all over Maine? Yeah, they don't know it works. I think it's on Route 11, but I'm not sure. It's in Sanford or Berwick. If you take Old Swamp Road to the mm -hmm. end, there is a sign there that and it's flashing, but he did bring up some good points about what happens if it doesn't work and people yeah. getting used to not looking because they yeah. see it. Well, that's what Michael, Michael just. I was up in, what was my cousin was Parsons Field, Maine, dog on Saturday. And um, they had one actually on the end of a road, I don't, whatever, I don't know what the route number is, 117, I think. And it didn't work actually. I was like, huh. I wasn't. I was so, going right, so it was a Which is what they were hinting at. What he was saying, I was like, well, you know, he's right. They don't know it works. Yeah. So okay. if it's, you know, so it might not be the solution. But, yeah. yeah, but they're all over the place in Maine. So Interesting. In the more rural areas. So, so a question of clarification. The historical committee is asking for their appropriations to go into their trust fund. That does not need to be reviewed by the budget committee, or will it be reviewed by the budget committee? It's not an appropriation. It's okay. not, it won't be, it does not need to be reviewed by the budget okay. committee. 
Now, it does, you know, we will have to look at it. I, I haven't seen it. So we assume that, you know, what, what the historical committee is asking is something that can happen. Language, I believe, that, uh, it, it came right from the municipal association. Okay. No, no, the Department of. Uh, oh, the Attorney General. Yeah, Attorney oh, perfect. Charitable um, giving, trust, right? trust, charitable right? giving, whatever. I can't right. remember what division. It is. Right. Yeah. No. It will just. You know. We we will recommend or not recommend, but it's <coughs> not an appropriation. So. Okay. For the child care, if a parent comes along with them and is willing to volunteer, is that acceptable for a younger child? Do we know? What do you mean if a parent comes along? I have a three-year-old, and i that's part of the reason I want to go, is my husband and I both want to be at town meeting. Yeah. And if there's only one person, ten kids, max, and I know my child's going to be there, that's five. I can't bring my three-year-old with me, too, so both my husband and I can be at town meeting. But my husband is willing to go be in the building, go with my three-year-old to help. Is that acceptable by this board? Is that not acceptable? And is that something to consider? This is where we get into micromanagement and I go, hmm. you just get more people? Well, we'd, lo we'd love to. Uh, we'd love more people. <laughs> well, why don't you hire some? We are willing to pay. Please, if you can find somebody, we are willing to pay. It, it's not an issue of the town not being willing to pay. It's an issue of finding people. We asked the rec committee. They found one person. That's lovely. That's so we have one person who can be there at town meeting. If somebody has other sources, please, you can send them our way. Do, are there prerequisites for we the position? We would prefer to do a, some kind of a background check, you know, just, just cause, you know. I hate, to, I hate to do it, but that's... Well, one of my child will be in our, our, our requirement. They have to have a background check. Pardon? They have to have a background check. Yeah, I understand. My child or some... Yes, I understand. Person. So that's the, we need to have a background check. Okay. Now, if they happen within you know a year of, of you know this town, then that should be okay. Reach out to Brittany and see if she can. Yeah, that would be great. Excellent. So yeah, on. Second go around. On Saturday. On Saturday. Saturday. So long ago now. <laughs> there were what was it, the school nurse and the kindergarten teacher, right? I, mean, I get it was a school meeting, so it was a little different, but. Um, I wonder if either of them would be willing to do uh, And the school nurse had stepped up prior to at the last school meeting. They didn't think that they were going to have somebody for their budget hearing, but the school nurse did step up yeah. to do that one too. So, and last year it was a teacher from the school and somebody from the town. So maybe asking at the school. I don't know who would go about doing that. The folks have been gone through background checks, right? So they would be. Yeah, everybody's gone to a background check. Yeah. yeah, and Brittany works at the school. She's an A. So. Yeah, so that would be. So anybody who worked for us prior to last from last year is already sure. background yeah. checked as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, feel I'll reach out to her again. Super, thank you. And um, if you're going to approach Black Bean, you should probably approach Doodle Bucks because the space that Black Bean or the landlord there is no Doodle Bucks. Well, Doodlebugs is still there. They've cut their space in half. That's how they Black Bean so. doubled size. Oh, I see. So they took down a wall. They cut open a very large building and they put up a wall, right? Because it's now... Oh, so they, they took Doodlebugs and Doodlebugs is in half. Right. They right. half. And they, and then, oh, I see. Thank you. So either talk to the landlord of the building or no, both booths. Yeah, we're going to refer to our building inspector, I'm sure. There are a number of layers that need to be dealt with. Anything else? All right, so we're going to go into non-public for, I think it's personnel issues, so I'll send you the results. Sandy, can I put uh, the Yes. I don't have anything else, right? All right, so I'm going to ask.